What's up, everybody? This is Nick with Connect Last. Today we have Lee Southern with us uh, from NJ Riot and NJ Riot North. He's the owner. Um, thanks for joining us today here at LaxCon. Thanks, Nick. Always good to see you, man. Always good to see you, too. So today we're going to learn a little bit more about NJ Riot and, you know, what they're all about. And, uh, you know, let's start with basically, you know, how did you get involved with lacrosse and, uh, you know, what led you to start NJ Riot? Uh, you know, some years ago, um, you know, my older sons, when they were in grade school, were, were playing lacrosse. And uh, after a couple years of, uh, you know, less than exciting, you know, lacrosse experiences, um, and I was a, a self-acknowledged uh, crazy sports parent. I've written about it. I, I've admitted it, you know. <laughs> Any parent who has a kids who play youth sports who says that they're not, they're lying to you. First step uh, to recovery, right? First step to recovery is acknowledgement, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I found a group of, uh, of other parents in the 2016 class that, you know, maybe felt the same way I did, that they weren't overly excited about it. And, you know, we started to recruit from there a group of, uh, of parents and were able to put together a 2016 team, uh, ran it at cost. Uh, the goal was to take them through high school and um, we were able to put together a you know, good group of boys and, um, um, you know, ended up, you know, finding some tournaments and just kind of put some things together and mm -hmm. it just kind of started to roll downhill from there and the team was pretty successful and little by little everybody started to get excited and the parents started to get into it and we just kind of did it, you know, the way a crazy sports parent would, you know, lots of communication, yep. good coaching, over communication. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of gear, a lot of apparel. And, you know, when you take the profit out of it at the time, you know, kids seem to get a lot of stuff and everybody seemed to be pretty happy about it. And the team ended up being successful, you know, flash forward three years later uh, with a couple of kids leaving and staying um, going through. Uh, those boys are now freshmen in college. There was a total pool of 30 players that had played on that team for those three years. 23 of them are playing in college right now, which is something wow. that we're very, very proud of. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, after the first year, we started with the same concept of the 2017 team, also at cost. Um, Great. You know, it all sounds good until you're putting in a lot of time and effort, and, you know, but now it's all good. We really, uh, you know, enjoyed the experience of it. Mm -hmm. um, we just finished up with that class last year. Also, again, ran it at cost as, as we committed to. Uh, ended up with uh, 18 boys. Um, uh, playing in college, or will be playing in college, or seniors this summer. Um, from there, you know, started with a couple of youth teams, and you know, people just seemed to be excited about it. And you know, you know, a couple of us decided, hey, let's, you know, roll this thing out, and you know, let's turn this into a full club. So you know, that's what we did, and it just seems to have gotten a little more and more. Yeah. Um, and you, then uh, putting guys in, in college and. You know, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters, you know, being able to continue to play in the sport that they love and, you know, get a whole new group of friends that, you know, they're going to be in the network for the rest of their life. That seems to be the feedback. You know, we're, we're hardworking, you know, a couple of hard, hard, hardworking guys, uh, excellent coaches, guys like uh, Brian Armstrong, who's our managing director yep. and our recruiting director, um, head coach of Madison High School in New Jersey. Without him, you know, uh, you know really uh, managing all the aspects behind the scenes and managing the coaches, you know, we wouldn't really be where we are today. Yep. Um, you know, uh, first and foremost, you know, we have a good, good, strong group of high school varsity coaches uh, on staff. Um, you know, we had expanded to uh, north, uh, north meaning Bergen County. Mm -hmm. uh, Brendan Gorman, who's uh, the new head coach of Don Bosco, is our north director and our Great. box director. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's been a, a very big asset as well. So. You know, uh, Dan Letterer, who's our, our director in, in, in Morris. I mean, we're just trying to run this like a business. Um, you know, I never played lacrosse, um, but, you know, my, my two sons play in college. Uh, and my uh, uh, two younger sons who are in grade two, anybody who follows us on social media, hashtag call Hollywood. Um, <laughs> the, the savage of all savages, you know, really getting after it. You know, <laughs> these guys just love the, the fun of it and the experience of it. And, you know, to me as a parent and talking to other parents and advising parents, that's the excitement, that's the fun of it. You know, you're spending money to play in clubs, you're spending money to buy equipment and coming to LaxCon and seeing all the people running around and looking at all the vendors and all the stuff and you see the excitement in these kids' eyes. And yeah. sometimes we have to remember that this is still a game even though it's competitive and club teams are competitive and some are more than others. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's, it, it is still a game and you know, there's still an excitement that kids are playing for a particular reason and at times we all, myself included, have to remember that there is a 
a, a fun value to it as well as a competitive value. Yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it right on the head. Like, at the end of the day, it's still a game, and, you know, everybody plays the game because they love it and watches the game because they love it. So, you know, I'm really glad to hear that. And I think that leads perfectly into our next question. You know, what should parents and players be looking for when they're selecting a club team? Because I know there's a lot of things that people consider when they do that, you know, whether it's the gear or it's the coaching or, you know, location. You know, what, what things do you think would be best for parents and players to consider? I'll tell you what, at the youth, at the youth levels, you know, um, and again, I won't mention names of clubs, but my sons were uh, members of multiple clubs and, you know, made some great friends, great camaraderie. And, and as parents, you know, um, my wife and I made very good friends with, with parents, but my sons never really got very good, strong quality coaching. Uh, for the young grades, coaching is very, very important. Yeah. Everybody likes nice swag, nice gear and apparel. Sure. You know, that's a nice thing to have. But, you know, obviously we do a lot of it, uh, yeah. um, which, again, because of something that I always liked, you know, as a parent, bringing stuff in. But um, and people will buy it if, if you offer nice stuff. But, you know, kids need to be coached and developed. Yeah. You know, I know your son is in fifth grade, which makes him, what, about 11, uh, 12 maybe, uh, or in some places 14. But you know, he should be 12 <laughs> or 11, whatever the age group is. I know your kid's a stud, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, he's still 11 and, you know, should still be able to hang out with their friends and still be able to, you know, go have a sleepover at their friend's house for their birthday and, you know, uh, or, or do the things that 11 year olds do, yeah. you know, playing lacrosse and having year round training because, um, that's what your club team wants you to do is, is ludicrous. I'm sorry. It is mm -hmm. playing spring rec lacrosse is something that they should do, you know, taking your child out of spring rec lacrosse to be able to play with their friend not play with their friends because the club team is demanding that they do it is ludicrous mm -hmm. flat out truth um yep. you know some of the kids that are extraordinary athletes or whatever you want to look at uh at, at those young ages some of their best friends may not be very good athletes does that mean that they shouldn't be able to hang out with those kids because the other kids are not that good athletes <laughs> you know again there has to be a balance in things that these kids are doing these days yep. so if your son or daughter is fortunate enough to be a good enough athlete to try out and make a quality club program in whatever sport it is in this particular case lacrosse yeah. you know coaching very important organizational you know um you know uh, uh, team parents um communication you know getting a good schedule well in advance so you could plan a vacation that you're entitled to over the summer yeah. um you know practices you know um uh, making sure that you're aware of all of the fees not getting committing to a team and then six months later, be four months before the summer because Trouts is so early, finding out that is another payment due that you didn't realize was due, mm -hmm. you know, um, if that was even proper English. Uh, you, know, you know, information about what's going on and, you know, good coaching and development and communication is very important. Yep, communication is key. Exactly. Yeah. On the field and off. So, great point. Um, you know, the next thing is, I, you know, you obviously have some criteria that you look for in players uh, that want to be a part of your program. I mean, it, it seems like you guys run a very family-focused, um, you know, player, parent, et cetera, um, kind of club where everybody's, you know, together, tightly knit. You know, what type of player do you want to be a part of an NJ Riot family? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, you know, the fundamental basis is we are a lacrosse club program that people try out for. So, you know, we're looking for, you know, you know, athletes, you know, at the younger ages, um, we're looking for, for, you know, uh, players that are athletic that, you know, uh, want to have a commitment to the game that could commit to the practices and commit to the schedule. That's very important. Mm -hmm. We've stiffened up this year on the commitment level. Uh, in the past, we've allowed people to, you know, be a little, um, um, uh, you know, not as, committed to the practices, uh, which we've changed a bit this year. Um, we do take suggestions uh, and, and, and ask our parents a lot of information and, and, and listen to what they say and, you know, try to enforce that stuff. Uh, at the high school level, um, the rubber really meets the road. You know, again, my previous answers to my questions, uh, to, to Nick's questions rather, about recruiting. If you look at our website um, that, uh, and our recruiting list, We've done a very, very strong job, again, thanks to Coach Armstrong, first and foremost, with our college commitment list, um, with the way he recruits and, and speaks to college coaches about, you know, the boys in our program that are being committed. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, it's very important to find people that understand 
if you're going to commit to play college across what you're in for and the college coaches to know what kind of young man you're getting in return yeah um so you know depending on where you're at uh at the age group you know um we like to win like everybody else um our teams are getting better and better every year at the youth level our high school teams are compete with just about anybody uh but you know we're looking for players that are committed that are athletic that want to continue to get better and contrary to popular belief and i've written about this multiple times on social media um you know we get attached to some of the players and families in our program mm -hmm. and tryouts every year are a very uh contentious uh period for me because there are players that get cut each year and you know it's sad to me when kids get cut i wish we could keep yeah. everybody um because you, you know but you can't that's just the reality if you want to have a competitive club there's some kids who are going to get replaced mm -hmm. you know so you know um you know that's that's the hard part at the yeah. end of the day yeah i know you mentioned recruiting and obviously look the landscape is changing rapidly and you know it's it's evolved or whatever you want to call it you know how has your role as a club owner um changed in terms of recruiting um over the past couple of years here well look I'm, and i'm going to toot Nick's horn here because, you know, obviously, you know, Connect Lax is, and he's laughing here because this is, this is going to sound very self-serving <laughs> for him, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we are now registered to be um, one of Connect Lax's club programs that are affiliated with him and having all of our uh, eighth graders, ninth graders, tenth graders, eleventh graders be part of their recruiting program um, because, you know, it's hard enough uh, to help a lot of the players and their families try to understand the process there are some players that do their own research there's some players that hear things secondhand uh, and as we all know no matter what we're talking about industry wise secondhand information for the most part is generally not accurate yep. uh, so um, for us to be able to take a lot of time in our day and look we really get after it in everything we do but you know I've been in the financial planning business 24 years Brian Armstrong is a teacher um, you know, Tim Rowe, who's, you know, our COO is in the financial planning business. You know, uh, a couple of our other staff members have other careers and we all put a lot of time and effort into this business and we all have families and multiple kids. You know, we need people, professionals who are in this business full time, like Nick and Gage and the boys over at Connect Lax, you know, to have a portal that has all the college coaches information that have webinars that have information. So, um, it becomes overwhelming when we engage our families to come and play for us because we're proficient in the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. We're not proficient. We're proficient in uh, getting our families to want to look to be committed to the process of recruiting. Connect Lax, as one of the available services, are committed to the recruiting process. So therefore, we engage our families to engage them. And for what they charge, it's a steal. So it's, this is a promotional video, I guess, for Riot Lacrosse, whatever, but it's really a promotional video as well for Connect Lax because everybody who's in the recruiting process needs to help from people who know what they're talking about, and these guys know what they're talking about, plain and simple. Well, hey, pretty much appreciate it, Lee, and uh, <laughs> love it, love it. That's what's um, up. You know, that's, that's great stuff, and I know that, you know, you guys are, are great with your efforts and, and what you do with your players and making sure that they commit to colleges and continue that experience and... You know, I know that you mentioned secondhand information, and it's always confusing for parents to say, you know, what do college coaches look for? You know, should I be emailing them this and that? But, you know, I think it's always great for parents to understand, like, what you have interaction wise with college coaches and, like, what some of the common questions are that you get as a club owner and, you know, Brian gets and everything that seem to be repeat questions from college coaches. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to speak entirely for Brian, um, but uh, one of the things that, that have come my way as far as questions, um, you know, obviously, you know, you see coaches on the sidelines, they're watching the boys play, they're watching highlight reels, which have become a very good way, uh, you know, to, to see the way the boys move on the field and, you know, transcripts for their grades. Um, but there's some intangibles. Character is a very big uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coaches want to know about a, about a young man's character. You know, uh, are they going to be, um, you know, uh, good in the locker room? You know, are they going to be a good member of, of, of the community? Yeah. What type of, you know, extracurricular things do they do? Um, you know, do they have uh, siblings? You know, nobody puts those type of items in their highlight reel. Right. Hey, by the way, I have really good character. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, I help out at Meals on Wheels in my local community. Yep. You know, for Thanksgiving, 
you know, I go down to, you know, my local church or synagogue and help, you know, some of the elderly in the community, um, mm -hmm. you know, hand out meals uh, or I do something in a homeless shelter. I mean, we have a couple of players who do some of those things. And really, at the end of the day, it only comes up, you know, when you happen to have a conversation with a coach and, you know, they ask those questions. Yeah. Not every college coach asks those questions either. There's some times where we offer the information and there's some times that it, does, it just doesn't come up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some ancillary pieces of information that maybe comes as valuable. Um, there's some other times where there's some character issues where, you know, we'd be remiss to not mention. Um, but again, those are things that we, we do discuss um, with the parents uh, about potential issues. And at the end of the day, these kids are minors and you have to also be careful about information about minors that you're that you're discussing, you know, with people as well. So it, is, it could be a sticky wicket, if yep. you will, as well. So, you know, um, but, you, you know, we try our best to be fair with the information. The last thing in the world you want to do is, you know, um, uh, just, you know, blanketly say, yeah, oh, yeah, anytime they're asking about a player, oh, yeah, you definitely want this kid, no question, just to be able to post a commitment. It's, you don't want to do that either because yep. it's your reputation on the line as well. Absolutely. Or as you call it, pushing wood. You don't want to push wood. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. And as we come to a close here, um, you know, lastly, you know, that, I'm sure that information is super helpful for parents and players, players are here, but, you know, what advice would you give to parents and players overall um, to help navigate them through the recruiting process? You know, any do's and don'ts that you'd recommend? Look, at the end, at the, at the end of the day, um, you know, visiting schools is very important. Taking your time. Um, I know there's a lot of pressure. Uh, that comes with recruiting. Um, there are times where there's a group of boys that are good players that are all going through showcases together. And, you know, once one, one young man commits and then another one, then, then it starts to become very pressure filled. And yeah. for, the, for the next one to do it, um, you start to make decisions uh, that you may not have done because you want to get the process over with. You know, then all of a sudden you commit and then you get to all the social media stuff and, you know, the hype comes up. And then, you know, a month later, all the hype is done and then they're on to the next person. And then, you know, you see a lot of the decommits starting to happen a year later. And, you know, taking your time is really the best scenario. A lot of colleges have spots open. If you read a lot of the posts that are going on, there's 2017s, current seniors that are committing to Division One schools. Granted, not a ton, but there are some. You have to have confidence in yourself and in your abilities. And if you're still haven't quite filled out yet and you're a junior or a senior, you know, there's people that take the late bloomer factor into the mix. You're not done. You're never done. And here's the last piece. Academically, for the higher academic schools, you know, uh, this is very important. You know, there are kids that have committed that are likely not going to hit the SAT or ACT scores. They're going to have a blemish on their record. They're going to have a character blemish. Something's going to happen. They might lose their love for the game. Something might happen. And one or two of those spots on a particular team that were filled up when they were freshmen or sophomores may very well open up. And yeah. guess what? You, on the other hand, may fill out, may get those grades up. You have to keep working. you got to keep grinding, and you're never 100% out of the game. And if you think you are or people have told you there are, they're lying to you. Keep grinding. Keep up the good work. See you on the field, y'all. Lee, you're the man. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Pleasure having you, and I uh, look forward to seeing the, the Riot boys light up this summer. Always. All right. Thanks, Thank man. you, everyone. Talk to you soon.